Hello everybody, my name is Stefan and this is going to be the pre-video of another modeling tutorial. I'm going to show how you can model a Formula 1 car, especially the RB6, the Red Bull. And I mean that's a model of that car uh, that you see here on my screen. And this is not what I modeled, um, I'm going to explain this later. Um, Alright, so to all, of, first of all, first of all, um, to all of you guys that watched um, other video tutorials on my YouTube channel, uh, I would like to say thank you, because uh, this is—it's just insane. I mean, when I uploaded my my video tutorials of that Rolex or the, that rim and stuff like that, um, I never thought that this is going to be, yeah. Uh, so huge and it's getting I don't know man I, I got I get a hundred thousand clicks on all those videos I mean that's insane <laughs> so thank you guys um, it's kind of cool so and I know a lot of you guys were waiting for another tutorial here and you have to admit that I am pretty busy and uh, this time for this video tutorial I um, yeah, I, I will do it in a different way. So for the other uh, tutorials, what I did was I modeled this all this stuff, and then um, when I was done with that, I modeled all this stuff a second time and recorded it. And I mean that's uh, a bit time consuming, um, especially for me right now, because um, yeah, I'm pretty busy. So this time I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna record all this on the fly. So uh, be aware of that. I will. I might go back and forth a little bit, but uh, yeah. So the plan is um, starting with the with the tutorial, and when I have the time, I'll yeah, create another piece, another piece, and then upload that video. So I can't tell you exactly when <laughs> all this is done. So because I don't even know when I have the time to to finish the next videos. Another thing is I don't really know how long that takes to model a car like this, right? But we'll see, and you have something that you can follow, uh, even if it takes a bit more. Um, but yeah. Alright. So why do you see uh, a 3D model of uh, the Red Bull here on my screen uh, when I haven't modeled it? Uh, and that's easy to explain. So I was searching for some nice reference images uh, on the web. I mean, you find a lot of pictures out there from the Red Bull, like this one here, or going back, or step back here, type in RB6 Red Bull, and you find, uh, I don't know, thousands, millions of, of pictures. Yeah, oh, it says uh, 59,000 here. Um, and I would re always recommend for, for every project, just download pictures, um, good pictures from different angles of view and stuff like that. It's always important to have to, um, yeah enough reference that you can look at. Uh, when you're modeling, and what I also tried to 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 get here in Germany was um, a toy a model of this Red Bull, uh, not a small one. I wanted a little bit bigger one, <laughs> but those are all sold out. Uh, I mean, that's might might be because uh, our guy here, the Sebastian Vettel or Sebastian Vettel, uh, <laughs> he he won the championship for all of you guys who are not following the F1. But uh, yeah, I might I might want to order one online for this uh, project here because it's always good to have something in front of you to have a look at, especially if there are some shapes that are I would say a little bit more, uh, yeah, like complicated, not complicated, but a little bit more, uh, yeah, not that easy to to model in some cases. So yeah, we'll see, and I'll see when I model this. So yeah, just uh, go in there and d download, uh, that's what I will do, uh, or what I already did, just download a bunch of images um, and put it in a folder uh, somewhere on your system. And let's go back to Maya. So to explain where I got this model from, um, yeah, when the F1 game uh, 2010 from Codemasters came out in September, I bought it and I played it oh, quite a bit uh, with a Logitech wheel and pedals and I think the gameplay is very cool. The graphics are alright, it's, it's, it's a nice game, a little bit buggy right now, but um, I like the, the gameplay and the feel of it. So. Um, so what I did was um, I took a software. So let me switch back to Firefox. So the software from uh, Sim Garage here. Um, it's uh, the 3D Sim ad here, and you can download a free demo version. Um, I think that's working for I don't know 20 or 30 days. 
And from this software, uh, you, you can just go to your uh, games folder. And I can't show you that here on this system because this is my, my 3D uh, workstation. And I have a, another uh, computer gaming system where this is on. And I, I don't want to provide you with the, with the model here because the, I'm pretty sure there is something like copyright on it. Uh, but I think it's legal to uh, use the, the model here. Um, to um, yeah, why do I have this here? I uh, haven't uh, told you yet. So what I want to do is I want to create um, some kind of wireframe render of this one so that we have some nice orthographic images from the top, the side, the front, and the back and the bottom. Um, because if you're searching the web for um, some nice uh, blueprints of an F1 car, uh, you find something, but it's not it's not the Red Bull. And so that was to me um, the only way to um, get nice orthographic images. Even if yeah, if you, I mean, some edge flows are okay, but um, yeah, this is triangulated because yeah, it's coming out of a game engine here. Um, so. That's what those guys have to do when they're done uh, done modeling. They have to triangulate this and put it uh, into that game. Uh, and that's why it's looking so weird here. All right. Um, before I start, so what I will do is um, and and you don't have to follow me um, this uh, this video because uh, the result of this video here or the maybe the next one too. I don't know how long I'm talking here. Um, so I, I'm going to provide you with the result, which is reference images, orthographic wireframe renders, right? And so this is only yeah the pre-video of the beginning of the tutorial. That's I think that's what I told in the beginning of this video, but uh, yeah. All right. So I lost my mind. Let me think a second. All right. Let's uh, get started here. Um, so what I want to do is um, I want to reduce the number of triangles. So yeah, I could go in there and uh, take piece by piece here and uh, delete uh, the tri the trees here or tri tries. Uh, but I'm gonna make it simple. I let Maya do some of this work. So if you take a, if you select all those objects, uh, let me take a closer look here. And let's go to mesh and then go to I can't pronounce this word in English. Quadrangulate. All right, it sounds so funny, but the quadrangulation. Okay, so let's open the options here, uh, and I set it here to angle threshold to uh, 180. So that gave me almost the best result. So I tried it out earlier. So I turned all this stuff off here. World space coordinates. So I uh, leave leave this on, and say okay, apply. So what you see here, okay, it, it, Maya oh, did a good job. I mean, not a not a good job, but uh, it did its uh, job. So it, it took out um, yeah, a bunch of tri triangles here. I mean, there's still some, a lot of them, uh, but not that many. So we are going with this thing here, and all right. Now let's um, take this and create um, a tune shader um, to render out a wireframe. And that's a technique that you can use for other projects that you have. I mean, that's pretty cool and pretty uh, quick renders. So let me stop talking. So go here to tune uh, to the tune shelf. Uh, my English is a little bit rusted. So yeah, with all those objects selected, let's uh, click here on that white tune shader. So assign it. So it's getting white. And then we add um, how is it called uh, a tune outline. So it takes a second here. And it creates some some paint effects uh, strokes, so we don't need those in the viewport. So go here to uh, profile lines off, border lines, open edge. Let's turn it off as well. So we're working with those crease lines. All right, go down here um, to the crease lines and the options, and uh, dial down the crease angle max and the minimum to zero. Uh, it takes us another second here. All right, so with that done, we only have to um, uh, dial down the crease line width. So uh, let's click on that and type in something like 0 0.01. I think that's working fine. Okay, now we are ready to render this out. Um, like I said before, uh, don't uh, don't panic. You don't have to follow me. It's just um, yeah to show you. Uh, how 
uh, where I get, got my uh, reference images, uh, and I will provide you with that later on. So I think I'm gonna pause this video and finish the render the the wireframe render um, in the next video.